Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got Stacy with me. Hey everybody. Oh, we up here on part 11 out of similar to 9. This mini series we've been working on, almost finished. What are we going to talk about in this section, say? In this section, we will cover uh, the last six mountains. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. All right, so we're going to discuss what they are, what are the traits, how to identify these individuals from these mountains. Yeah, what we're talking about here uh, in these mountains, we're going to cover uh, grudges. We're going to talk about malice. We're going to talk about denying the father. We're going to talk about martyrdom. Um, all of these are going to be covered in this section. All right, so we're going to discuss martyrdom, talking about what it what it means to get your fruit or your buds on your on your um, on your branches there. Yeah, we're going to talk about distraction, having grudges, holding grudges, and um, how unforgiveness can keep you out of the tower. All right, y'all. Well, y'all stick with us. Be prepared to uh, leave comments as we go, and go ahead and hit that like button if you don't mind. Shalom. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Lord, we come to you today asking you to impart wisdom and understanding on us as we go through this Bible study in the Shepherd of Hermes, allowing us to understand and relay the messages that you would have us to teach. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so be it. Hey, y'all. This is Coach in the Fight. Got Stacy here. Hey, y'all. And we're up on verse 205 out of... 280 verses. We're almost finished. We're going to bite out a big chunk of it today, Lord willing. Might as well get started. Let's get started. Let's get started. 205. For what concerns the six mounting, having greater and lesser clefts? They are such as have believed, but those in which were lesser clefts are they who have had controversies among themselves, and by reason of their quarrels, languished in the faith. Now, it has been a few days since we've looked at the first five mountains, and we're all the way up here on mountain number six, so this may seem a little bit disjointed. But when we start talking about these clefts, we're talking about cracks. Yeah, we're talking about cracks. So we have individuals with big cracks and individuals with small cracks. Mm -hmm. It says, um, have had controversies amongst themselves and by reason of their quarrels, language in the face, in the faith. So these are people who have little problems with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so would these be like the backbiters or the slanderers or those that are talking about each other? Or Yeah, doing, those that are doing um, uh, words as well as, you know, little deeds aggravating each other and things like that, I would think. Yeah, okay. And so these are actually right now holding them outside of the tower. They're holding them outside of the tower, but there's going to be others with some bigger clefts too, right? Mm -hmm. And they're not going to be so easily to recover. Right. Okay. 206. Nevertheless, many of these have repented, and so will the rest when they shall hear my commands. For their controversies are but small, and they will easily return unto repentance. Talking about the mandates, talking about the commands, talking mm -hmm. about back in the second book of the Shepherd of Hermes where he gave us some rules to go by. Well, let me read this, what it says about detraction. It said, detraction is an evil spirit and never continues in peace, but is always in discord. And that kind of thing, was, and what he's saying here in this verse way up here, um, that we're talking about 205 and 206, he's saying that it is through these commands that we're going to learn to put away these clefts. So we got to go back and we got to read and we got to understand the commands, the mandates, in order to put away the smaller clefts, giving us a chance to dwell in the tower. Yeah, the, um, the, the book of commands breaks it down real easy um, for us to say, okay, now I get it, now I can do it. If anybody wanted to jump back over, we've already done that that command um, a little while back, and we can just give you a link to it. But let's go on. 207. But those who have the greater cliffs would be as stiff stones, mindful of grudges and offenses, and full of anger among themselves. These, therefore, are cast from the tower and refuse to be put into the building. For this kind of men shall hardly live. Uh, paying attention to offenses and what people have done to you. Um, I've, I've had a lot of personal contact with this particular spirit or that, that spirit. 
And yeah, that's a huge problem. Um, remember one time I was gonna write my story. I was actually gonna write a book about my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was it? What was it called? Uh, Memoirs of an Angry Soul Winner or something like. That. <laughs> yeah, something like. Yeah. <laughs> and basically, you know, you know, I made it to like twenty some chapters in this book. I think I had like the majority of the book written, but the thing about it, I was making the injuries that I had. Uh, with staying over the course of this, over the course of my ministry, the course of my spiritual walk, I was remembering those, and they was really getting to me to the point where it actually took me off track. It actually put me in a bad place. It, it was actually one of the things that helped me become one of these rejected stones. Was actually remembering all of the bad stuff that is that had happened to me. Okay, I'm gonna go on. Two oh eight. Our God and Lord, who ruleth over all things and has power over all his creatures, will not remember our offenses, but is easily appeased by those who confess their sins. But man, who languid, mortal, infirm, and full of sins, perseveres in his anger against man, as if it were in his power to save or destroy him. Like up there in 207, it when we remember in these grudges that makes us full of anger, that makes us angry is where we start remembering um, what the things that has happened to us. But like it says down here in 208, our father is not like that. He doesn't remember our injuries at all. You got to remember we're not hurting him. When we commit sins and do wickedly against each other, we're not really hurting him at all. You right. know, we're really only hurting ourselves. Yeah. You know, and so he doesn't, he, do, he, do, he isn't mindful of our sins and our transgressions um, he's very patient with us and and we kind of need to be that same way with each other that's why the prayers go something like forgive us of our, our debts as we forgive our debtors mm -hmm. yeah, yeah we have we have to we have to forgive our debtors in order to you know expect forgiveness of our own debts and transgressions yeah 209 but I as the angel who am set over your repentance admonish you that whosoever among you has any such purpose, he should lay it aside and return unto repentance. And the Lord will heal your former sins, if you shall purge yourselves from this evil spirit. But if you shall not do it, you shall be delivered to him unto death. Those other wicked women are going to come and take a hold on you. What he's saying here, if you're going to hold on to the grudges, if you're going to hold on to the injuries that you've suffered at the hands of other people, if you're going to remember those injuries, then what's going to happen is those other uh, spirits like anger and hatred and lying, they're actually going to move in along with the uh, slanderous spirit, and they're actually going to, to take you back to a place that you wouldn't want to be. What does he say here? It's going to take you unto death. It's going to end up killing you. Yeah, um, you know, I've seen this and I'm sure others have too about when you hold a grudge, it's just so much seems to come down on you. Like you said, lying, sadness, uh, uh, anger, all this stuff just starts piling up on you over one little something that that wasn't a big deal. Now all of a sudden you're tormented by these wicked women um, because simply because you didn't Ask for forgiveness, uh, then repent, and, and and go on about your way. Yeah, yeah. Be, be, and be long-suffering with those individuals that committed these sins. You know, a lot of times you're not dealing with the smartest people, you know, and you have to remember that, and remember that, you know, just like children, you have to you have to be patient with them, and you know, suffer their injuries. You have to be meek as well, and suffer their injuries. Yeah. 210, 210, as for the seventh mountain in which the grass was green and flourishing and the whole mountain faithful and all kind of cattle fed up on the grass of it and the more the grass was eaten, so much the more it flourished. All right, so now we're getting into one of these good mountains one where you, these individuals from this mountain can expect to go into the tower unhindered. Because, you know, it's, it's talking about how they are, are green and flourishing and such. 211. They are such as believe and were always good and upright and without any difference among themselves, but still rejoiced in the servants of God, having put on the spirit of these virg virgins and been always forward to show mercy to all men. 
readily giving to all men of their labors without upbraiding and without deliberation. Now, when you go to the the story of the rods, remember in Similitude 8, he was he was basically telling us the same story, but in using rods of the willow tree instead. Um, it was the ones from the Green Mountain that the majority of the people turned their rods in. You remember, majority of the people turned their rods in green, so they turned their rods in this way here. Um, um, yeah, once they turned them in green, then they start uh, uh, budding and producing fruit. So it started starts with the green, green, um, the yeah, flourishing those, green. Yeah. yeah, and it's going to do the same here, where you have like the green ones are, you know kind of the, the majority of the, the people, but then a few of them are going to go on to get, you know, uh, buds, and some of them are going to be fruit, which represents, you know, actually having to suffer for the, for the word. 2.12, wherefore the Lord, seeing their simplicity and innocence, has increased them in the works of their hand and given them grace in all their works. Okay, now this is what it's talking about, how they are, they, they're flourishing. Uh, what does it say up there in 210? Um, grass was green and flourishing and the whole mountain faithful and all kinds of cattle fell up on the grass a bit. Yeah, so, and down here it's saying that they are, that their the works of their hands are blessed, which is one of the promises of the scripture is that, you know, those things that we try to accomplish will work in our favor. Mm -hmm. 2.13, but I, who am the angel appointed over your repentance, exhort you that as many as are of this kind will continue in the same purpose, that your seed may not be rooted out forever. These people don't have the problems that are affecting the rest of us. They don't have clefts. They don't have cracks. They are um, obviously not blasphemous or teaching false doctrines or such. These are the people who are doing what they're supposed to be doing. These are the majority of the people. Um, so when it says that your seed may not be rooted out forever, that's talking about your children? It's talking about your children. Now, and it didn't say forever. Uh, well, he actually did say forever here. It was that other that other uh, translation. translation, that, that uh, yeah, that audio book that said wouldn't be removed until the end of days or the end of the end of the age. And I was kind of concerned about that, the way it says the end of the age, because to me that was saying that, okay, they were going to last until the end of the age, and then they were going to get rooted out. Well, you always say that that's the watered down. Yeah, um, it is definitely watered down. And, you know, and here's some of the words right here where, you know, it takes a little bit away from it because it's saying that their seed is going to last forever, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think I think what, one thing that really needs to be pointed out here is he's he's not saying that the individuals are going to last forever. He's saying that their children are going to last forever. He's like putting a guarantee on their children. Whereas them, they may go down as martyrs. They may go on to get that those uh, buds and they may go on to get the fruit. It, and he's not really talking about them. But it is saying that their their seed will survive forever. Their, ch their children will live forever. Yeah, so that's, um, that's pertinent that we, we teach them the right way. They have to take on the 12 virtues as well if no matter if if we do an excellent job of taking on the virtues if we don't pass it on to them if they turn out to be you know cleft or turn out to be angry or whatever then yeah they're going to end up taking themselves out of the tower mm -hmm. so so you're right 214 for the lord has tried you and ridden you into our number and all your seed shall dwell with the son of god for ye are all of his spirit Again, it's the, 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 the children that have the guarantees, but, he, but even though we don't have a guarantee to survive the tribulation, we still have to walk in these virtues, understanding what is the other option. Do you know what happens to those who take on the 12 virtues, um, live a righteous life, but still die in the tribulation? I do not. <laughs> they, they go on, they basically are purified in this lifetime. When, you know, they finally do close their eyes in this lifetime, they will have been completely purified of all sins, unlike other people who are going to have to go into the, into the spirit world and are going to have to suffer in the spirit world for a little while and be cleansed in the spirit world. That's all part of the purification process. These people who are up this mountain here and 
for some reason do not survive the tribulation through being martyred or something like that. They actually don't really suffer the same torments as the other people in the spirit world. They don't suffer that kind of hell feeling. But then when they're born back as children, they come as what the, what the scripture called great spirits. Well, these are going to be the the future apostles. These are going to be the future prophets. These are going to be the future men and women of God who are basically going to carry a serious message for humanity. These are going to be like Moses. They're going to be like Noah. Yeah, I think this talks. It talks a lot about this um, in the Third Testament, right? Right. That's where I'm getting it from, right? Yeah. Two fifteen. As concerning the eight mountain in which were a great many springs, by which every kind of all the creatures of God was watered. They are such as have believed the apostles which the Lord sent into all the world to preach. Alright, so now, the main difference between mountain number 8 and mountain number 7 is the water. Whereas mountain number 7, you know, they were righteous people, they were ready to go into the tower, they were not springs of water there, meaning they were not ministering to the saints. They were not teaching. They were not going out of their way. They are, they got the law. They lived the law. They absorbed the law. But, you know, they didn't try to go forth and try to teach it to other people, which, of course, increases the level of difficulty, makes it a little bit harder and tougher when you actually start trying to teach the word. Yeah, because you have... Um, you have rejection. Yep. You have um, envy, all kinds yeah, of stuff that you have yeah. to deal with once you open your mouth for the word. Right. Two sixteen, and some of them, being teachers, have preached and taught purely and sincerely, and have not in the least yield to any evil desires, but have constantly walked in righteous and truth. See, these are the teachers. These ones with this this water. Remember the father called it, the, the Messiah called it living water. He told the lady by the spring that if you drink of this water, you'll never mm -hmm. be thirsty again. This is the kind of water that he's talking about on this eighth mountain. These, therefore, have their conversations among the angels. Yeah, um, we walk with angels now. It's just that sin is one of the things, the transgression of the law, is one of the things that separates us from our angelic brothers makes it where we can't hear from them, we can't, you know, uh, take advantage of their being here or anything. Um, it is because, you know, we're kind of dirty. You, you have to have a certain level of cleanliness to, you know, be around these angelic figures. Right. But once you get there, you know, like he says right here in verse 217, 217, he said their conversation will be among the angels. 218. Again, as for what concerns the night mountain, which is desert and full of serpents. They are such as have believed, but have many stains. Okay, so these are the ones who got stains coming from these desert mountains. Um, like on Mountain 7, it was green and flourishing. This one is a desert land. On number 8, it was uh, had water and such. There is no water on this one. And some of the other mountains are going to have uh, cattle and, and, you know, animals uh, taking advantage of the greenness of the mountain. On this one, you got serpents and, you know, all kinds of bad stuff going on. This, this is not a very good mountain to be on anyway. 219. These are such ministers as discharge their ministry amiss, ravishing away the goods of the widows and fatherless, and serve themselves, not others, out of those things which they have received. Yeah, these are people uh, going out of their way to getting paid on the ministry. 220. These, if they continue in this covenantness, have delivered themselves unto death, nor shall there be any hope of life for them. But if they shall be converted and shall discharge their ministry sincerely, they may live. Yeah, so they have a chance. Yeah, you know? they have a chance for repentance. Yeah. Right, and then, you know, they're not going to get off scot-free. You know, they basically are going to have to pay for, you know, that which they've accepted or whatever. But they do have a chance for repentance. You know? As for those which were found rough, they are such as have denied the name of the Lord and not returned again to the Lord but have become savage and wild, 
not applying themselves to the service of God, but being separated from them, have for a little carelessness lost their lives. So the rough ones are a part of this desert mountain. Some of these stones coming out of this desert mountain are actually going to be of the rough stones. Mm -hmm. These are uh, these are ones who have denied the Lord. You know, um, I guess that could take on many different forms. Actually, denying the Lord because that that can in include denying the Word of God. That can include denying the Holy Spirit. But it doesn't sound like blasphemy. Definitely ain't blasphemy because they would be on the black mountain if it was blasphemy. So you have to understand the difference between what's the difference between denying the Lord and blaspheming the Lord. The Lord. So it's saying that they, though they denied, they returned again, which means that they came no, they back into not. the. Oh, they did not return again, and not returned again to the Lord, but have, but have become savage and wild. Yeah. So at one point they they knew of the word, they knew of the Lord, they knew of the Father, but they messed up when they denied him first, and then they never returned back to him again, so they, they became savage and wild. 2.22 For as a vine that is forsaken in a hedge and never dressed, perishes and is choked by the weeds, and in time becomes wild, and ceases to be useful to his Lord. So this kind of men despairing of themselves and being soured, having begun to be unprofitable to their Lord. See, these are the rough individuals. These are the individuals that are hard learners. These are the ones that, you know, you can't really get to them. You can't really tell them anything. You know, they think they know a lot. Um, they, they may have uh, read a few passages of the Bible and they think they got it all. But then when you go in and you're trying to fill in some of the blanks for them, that they, they don't want to hear you. They don't want to hear, you know, anything you have to say, especially anything that may contradict their own understanding. And so they tend to stay by themselves. And then they like, you know, like he's talking about like um, like a, a weed, like a fruit tree that's, you know, left unattended is eventually going to turn wild. The fruit's going to get small and then it's going to mm -hmm. go away. It's not going to be useful anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That reminds me of. um the um the flower tree that you planted where we grew a um, honeysuckle bush on it if we continue to let that honeysuckle bush just grow on there uh no longer will it be a flower tree it'll be just the the honeysuckle uh vine will take over the flower and actually kill it yeah kill it so it'll become a honeysuckle tree <laughs> yeah become a honeysuckle tree so yeah yeah 223 how be it to these there is after all repentance allowed, if they shall not be found from their heart to have denied Christ. But if any of these shall be found to have denied him from his heart, I cannot tell whether such a one can attain unto life. Yeah, so you're hoping that they're only denying him for their ignorance. Yeah, not meaning it. Yeah, not yeah. meaning it. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like for instance, if you were to try to present the Third Testament to an individual and, you know, they jump up and say, hey, I don't believe that. That's not necessarily coming from their heart. That's coming from their ignorance. Right. Yeah. And so that, that will be a difference on whether they are allowed to repent or not. Mm -hmm. 224. I say, therefore, that if anyone has denied, he should in these days return unto repentance. For it cannot be that anyone who now denied the Lord can afterwards attain unto salvation. Nevertheless, repentance is proposed unto them who have formerly denied. So this is talking to those individuals who may at some point have denied the Father. It's saying that they have to repent. Don't don't just, you know, think that, you know, you've committed this act and, you know, there is no hope for you. Just the idea of repentance being in your mind shows you that you do have a chance because if you had truly been blasphemous repentance never would have entered your heart it never would have came into your mind you never would have thought on it but if you find yourself you maybe have denied in the past and you're thinking about repentance then go ahead and repent you know that's what it means uh, this book here says promised but I mean, think the text says proposed meaning the idea of um, repentance will, will be offered to you, giving you the chance to take it. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
2.25, But he who will repent must hasten on his repentance before the building of this tower is finished. Otherwise, he shall be, li be delivered by those women unto death. Yeah, so he maybe find himself outside the tower as the rejected stones laid close by. But, you know, once this tower is built and you have the necessary numbers needed to make up this completed tower, and if you if that individual still hasn't repented, then he's going to be thrown far away from the tower. It's going to be cracked up. He's going to be broken up. He's going to be thrown far, far away from the tower. Yeah, uh, it just once again uh, reiterate how once you become, once you come into this truth, you need to go ahead and repent now while there's a break in the building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because once the building starts again and the tower is completed, then you will not have the um, the chance to um, be a part of this building. Yeah, you're basically going to spend some time in the spirit world. You know, let's understand what's happening to those people who don't make it into this tower. The ones inside the tower are the ones, the ones inside the tower, around the tower, the members of the tower or the court. They will be the people in the millennial age. They will be the fathers of humanity. They will be the Noahs going forward. They're the ones who's going to be in charge of repopulating the earth. But the ones of us who don't make it into the tower or into the court or nowhere close by, we're going to perish in this lifetime. That's what it means by we're going to death. We're, we're actually going to perish. We're actually going to go into the spirit world where we will finish out our cleansing process there. In the spirit world, what that place they, they call hell or whatever, that, that place will basically be tormented by our conscience until, until the days of our sin have been fulfilled. And then we will be reborn into the children of those who, you know, have survived. We'll be reincarnated into their children. You know. And won't this, you know, when you're um, tormented by your conscience, won't that be much worse? Yeah, um, much worse than what? Anything you can possibly imagine? Well, it will be like hell, right? Yeah, it's going to cause that. It's going to be like a fire that you're not going to be able to escape from as your conscience brings to your attention all of those bad things you've done. We, 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 we experience that from time to time now mm -hmm. with the only exception and now we can overpower our conscience. We can basically slap them around, tell them shut up and sit down somewhere. There's coming a time when, you know, we're not going to be able to get away from our conscience. It's really going to, you're going to have its way with us. It's mm -hmm. going to be dominant. Mm -hmm. 226. But they that are maimed are the deceitful, and those who mix with one another, these are the serpents that you saw mingled in that mountain. Okay, so we're still talking about the desert mountain here. And so you have rough individuals on the desert mountain. You have maimed individuals on the desert mountain as well. These are deceitful individuals. Those people who don't get along with other people as well, kind of uh, treacherous. These are the people that, that's on this mountain for the snakes, right? Those are the snakes. Right? Okay. Everybody says, uh, but they yeah. are the main and the deceitful. They are mixed with it. Are the, are the serpents. Yeah, so the main individuals, those that are deceitful, are the serpents. Mm -hmm. They're snakes. 227. For as the poison of serpents is deadly unto men, so the words of such people infect and destroy men. They are therefore maimed in their faith by reason of that kind of life which they led. So their deceitfulness actually harms other people. You know, um, you can imagine some of the servants of God are subject to this, basically hearing these slanders. And some of these people won't understand. They haven't quite read enough to show themselves approved. And when they find themselves under the detraction of these deceitful people, you know, it can become quite destructive. Mm -hmm. Start making these individuals question their faith or whatever. Yeah. You know, which is a lot of reason why the father, you know, keeps his people separated, keeps his people holy, you know, it's, you know to keep them away from this type of behavior. Right. 228. How be it, some of them have repented, have been saved, and so shall others of the same kind be also saved, if they shall repent. But if not, they shall die by those women whose power and force they possess. Yeah, so they have 
uh, opportunity to get away from this one spirit now, like we talked about in the, in, in the other class, th th you have this one spirit that's, that's harming your life now, you have the way to put it away from you. But if you don't, some of these other ones are going to come in and make themselves a part of your life too. They're going to move in too. Yeah, I think, um, you know, you have the four cheapest, but if you don't do away with those, then the other ones um, are going to quickly follow behind. Um, and, and it don't necessarily have to be the cheapest ones, though. You know, it, it could be that, you know, you just like pleasure or it could be that you just like malice or you could just like uh, foolishness. Mm -hmm. If you're a person who likes foolishness, um, fool, you'll just be foolish until the, the purification process starts. But once the purification process starts, you know, whereas before it was just the foolish woman that, that hung around you, now all of her buddies or some of her buddies are going to come in with her and mm -hmm. she's going to bring stuff like perfidiousness or infidelity with her when she when, when they come. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then it's all of these that's actually going to drag drag you back or drag you to death. It actually cause you to die. It's going to kill you. Yeah, it's like you're hanging around a bad crowd. They're going to drag you back happily. Drag you back. 229. For what concerns the tenth mountain, in which were the trees covering the cattle, they are such as have believed, and some of them have been bishops, that is, governors of the churches. Now we're getting back into one of the good mountains here. This, these, uh, the tenth mountain. It, I think the seventh mountain was green with herbs and stuff. This one actually has trees on it. You know these. These trees covering the whole the whole mountain there, and you actually have cattle and stuff that's eating off of these trees and stuff. This represents the bishops and the governors of the churches. Yeah, the cattle. So the cattle represents the people. Yes, cattle okay. represents, and by it being cattle opposed to sheep and goats, uh, understanding the the parable that Enoch talked about, the cattle the the bovine would represent all of humanity not just the israelites who would be the sheep or the gentiles which would be the goats the bovine represents all of them okay all right very interesting 230 others are such stones as have not fangly but with a cheerful mind entertain the servants of god talking about those on the 10th mountain and how important it is to entertain the servants of God because this is where you going this is where they're getting their information from. This is, you know, where they're getting their knowledge from. Remember he says he's not bringing his knowledge to the arrogant or to the well known, you know, the Reverend Pastor Deacon Dr. Doug is not going to get these new revelations except he get them from the service of God. Those lowly individuals, those humble individuals will be the ones who have to bring him the message. So although they may be bishops, although they may be governors of the churches, when they have the opportunity to listen to, um, to the service of God, these individuals did so happily. 231. Then such as have been set over inferior ministries, and have protected the poor and the widows, and have always kept a chaste conversation, therefore they also are protected by the Lord. So it's kind of comparing, uh, in 229 it talked about uh, governors of the churches, down here in 231 it's talking about inferior ministries, so... These will be these will be individuals like remind me of soul winners. Mm -hmm. Remind me of you know those people in the trenches, mm -hmm. um, those who you know their their ministry involved doing no more than going up and helping out widows and right. helping out orphans and such. They have no fame associated with it, no glory comes with it, no money comes with it, mm -hmm. you know. But these people are protected by the Father. Yeah, yeah. Two thirty two. Whosoever shall do on this wise are honored with the Lord. And their place is among the angels, if they shall continue to obey the Lord even unto the end. Because this is the kind of behavior that the Father expects of us. Helping right. out the orphans, the widows, and don't forget the Levi. Right. Mm -hmm. 233. As to the eleventh mountain, in which were trees loaded with several sorts of fruit, they are such as have believed and suffered death for the name of the Lord and have endured with a ready mind 
and have given up their lives with all their hearts. This is talking about those individuals who had to die for the for the name of the Lord. These are people like Stephen, people like Paul, mm -hmm. all of the twelve apostles, even the John. Messiah. Yeah, John, but even the Messiah, he would have had his fruit. Remember, he was the number one martyr, and by him being put on that cross was when he actually received his fruit mm -hmm. and that's what it means to have fruit that's what it means to stand on the right hand side of the the father remember some of the remember yeah. the disciples mom remember mm -hmm. that story yeah she kept asking the 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 messiah you know can my sons uh be at your right 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 hand side and he was telling her you don't want this you know you don't, you don't want them you yeah you don't for. know what you're asking for you're basically asking for your kids to be killed do you right. really want your children to be killed to stand on his right hand you know mm -hmm. and um and it's, and so people you know we want all of the blessings you know one thing about being one thing about christians we want all of the blessings we want to be we want to be saved and we want to be raptured. You know, we, we want everything. Um, understand when it's when it starts talking about fruit and crowns and all of that kind of stuff. You know, do you really want to be martyred? Do you, you know, yeah. You, you better be sure because if you ever have the opportunity, you can't deny. You can't turn around. Then you can't. You know, you can't deny the father in that moment because now you're gonna have hell to pay. Mm -hmm. You know. You, 234. And I said, Why then, sir, have all these fruit indeed, but yet some fairer than others? So he's saying, Those on this mountain, all he's saying, Why is it that all of them have fruit, but some of the fruit looks better than others? You know, why, why do some of their fruit look better? Some of the fruit will look better. And he's going to explain to them that, you know, even though all of these individuals were martyred, there were certain circumstances associated with their martyrdom that makes their fruit better. And he's going to explain it to them. 235. Hearken, said he, whosoever have suffered for the name of the Lord are esteemed honorable by the Lord. And all their offenses are blotted out because they have suffered death for the name of the Son of God. Yeah, so no matter what sins they have committed throughout their whole life, the fact that they had to be put to death actually cleanse away their sins. That's, that was actually a purification. That, go ahead. So what does it mean? Okay, I understand the be, to, be, um, to be martyred for the Lord, but what does it mean when it says for the Lord? What, what, what is going on? To be, you know, to to cause them to be martyred. Are they uh, somebody saying something against the Lord, and they come up and say, "Hey, you can't say that about my father," and they kill you, or what? It, what does it mean to, to no, die for the Lord? Just think about what happened to Stephen. Just think about what happened to the Messiah. Just think about what happened to Peter and Paul and, and all those individuals. Is that you, they were there preaching the word, teaching the word, when the government officials, the municipalities, came, grabbed the hold on them, and threw them in the prison, like they did John the Baptist. They just threw him in the, in the prison for teaching that message, and then, you know, after a while, they killed him. You know, it ain't so much as these people are putting themselves in harm's way no more than they are preaching and teaching the word of God. You know, they aren't running up saying, hey, kill me, kill me, kill me. You know, they're, they're actually just doing their job and they're being killed for it. Think of Maccabees. Remember the story of Maccabees? Yeah, okay, okay. You know, those individuals, you know, they, they were just told either deny the father or we're going to kill you. Mm -hmm. And they basically said, you know what, well, we'll get to kill him because we're not denying mm -hmm. We're not going to eat the pork. We're not going to, you know, do whatever wickedness you want us to do. You know, you just have your way with us. I have, I have a question for you. So, okay, so what if, would this here be considered a um, uh, martyr for the Lord? That someone's uh, uh, um, preaching up in the pulpit on a Sunday and someone walks in you know, and just start shooting up the church, the pastor or the preacher end up getting killed. Would that be? Yeah, that 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 would be uh, martyrdom for the father. He's there giving a sermon and somebody comes in and shoots him while he's on the pulpit. Yeah, I mean, and, and the guy that stands up and tries to save the congregation. Yeah, 
You know, the guy came killing them in the name of the Lord. Yeah, those are going to be counted as martyrs. Because what it ends up doing is it, is it ends up strengthening the faith of those around them. You know, it, it, it doesn't have the effect that the shooter thought it was going to have. Everybody going to run away and say, you know, I don't want nothing to do with, you know, with their father. No, actually those people are going to start praying more. They're actually going to start reading more. And it's actually going to cause the faith to, to increase. You know, when they, when they when they was killing those guys, why they stopped killing them? You know, when Constantine came in and was trying to take over the universal church there in about 300 A.D., the more he killed the people, the stronger the church got. Right. And so he finally wised up to that and said, you know what, I got to stop killing these people or are they going to, you know, increase their numbers? And so that's what he did. He, he, he stopped killing them and started acting like he got converted. Mm -hmm. And... That actually worked for me, you know. Yeah. A lot of people lost the faith at that point. Mm -hmm. 236. Hear now why their fruits are different, and some of them excel others. They who, being bought before magistrates and being asked, denied not the Lord, but suffered with a ready mind, these are more honorable with the Lord. The fruits, therefore, that are the most fair are these. All right, so I'm talking about what makes their fruit different. The key element to understanding what makes their fruit different is because these people was never going to deny. They don't care what you said. They wasn't going to deny the Father. Whereas those individuals with lesser fruit, they entertained the idea, and we'll find that in a second, the idea crossed their mind on whether they would actually deny the Lord or not. Mm -hmm. So imagine you walking down, the, the guy, you, you're in a long line, and the guy's walking down one, are you, are, are, are you a Christian? And just shooting them. Are you a Christian? They're shooting them. And so you about seven or eight people down the line, you're thinking about, you know, <laughs> am I going to say this? Yeah, what am yeah. I going to say? You know, and so their, their fruit will be a little bit different. Right. You know, the guy beside you, he's like, he's like yelling out there, you might as well hurry up and get down here because I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm a Christian. You boy, come on. You know, but the you sitting over there going, uh, oh, man, oh, be quiet. Chill I, out. Chill out, out really, a little bit. Do I really? Do I really? Am I really? What, what is, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 237. But they who were fearful and doubtful and have deliberated with themselves whether they should confess or deny Christ and yet have suffered their fruits are smaller because that this thought came into their hearts. Now one thing you should note is that we're not really experiencing this over here in America especially you know we're not going through this you know they're going through it you know a little bit over in China and in some of those other uh, uh, countries but it's going to get worse during the tribulation, this is actually going to be a major event as the um, the world governments start to see their empires collapse and they start to uh, blame the word and blame the father and blame these Christians for all of this bad stuff that's, that's going to be going on. Then there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be confronted. You know, do you, you know, do do you have that Holy Spirit in, that living inside of you that all of these people are talking about? Is that Spirit living inside of you? Are you obeying the Spirit? And it is then, you know, when people are start to uh, start to lose their confidence on whether or not they should should. Uh, should speak up for the father. The thing is, you know, we we, we talked about that in in one of the classes. Um, what is it? Only only those willing to suffer death will will. I forgot the name of that mm -hmm. class, but it said in that part of the third testament that is those individuals that deny him are the ones that's actually going to get killed. Mm -hmm. Not the ones who stand up. Not the ones who sit there and fight off the magistrates and you know say you know yeah I believe. It's the one who's actually going to waver. That's going to be going to be killed, mm -hmm. and that makes sense too. Yeah, that makes sense. You know, because you know, you you have a person who has who has done ninety percent of the work, ninety five percent of the work, walking in faith, walking in the law. He took on the twelve virgins, and here they are about to make one mistake that is the biggest, most serious mistake that they can ever make, and that's denying the Father. Well. Okay, well, fine. We'll go ahead and martyr them and take them out of them, put them in the spirit world for a little while, giving them the necessary cleansing that they're going to need. So when they do come back as children, you know, we, we ain't got to start over again. That stoning that they got behind of it cleansed the way they fought. And so now they're ready for an incorruptible body. 238. For it is a wicked and evil thought 
for a servant to deliberate whether he should deny his master. Take heed, therefore, you who have such thoughts, that this mind continue not in you, and ye die unto God. I think he's stressing this part out because we have this to come. A lot of individuals will be faced with this going forward. You know, and, and it may be more than just death. It may just be losing your friends or losing a meal or losing, you know, uh, 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 some of your comforts or whatever that will cause people to deny the father. But I think we have a lot of this about to come up on the church. This is about to happen inside of the church is the reason why he's bringing this out so much. Basically giving us a warning saying, you know, don't, don't, don't do this. Don't deny the father, mm -hmm. you know. But ye who suffer death for his name's sake ought to honor the Lord, that he has esteemed you worthy to bear his name, and that you should be delivered from all your sins. Because that's, that again, what it does, you know, this martyrdom, this facing the magistrates, being beat or punished or whatever it is that they do to you, cause you to, you know, be hungry for a little while, put you in prison, whatever it is that they do to you is actually going to cleanse away the rest of your sins. It's actually going to purify you completely. No matter what lifestyle you've led up until that point, martyrdom will cleanse all of that away. Yeah, so there's something new that I've learned. So once you are martyred, then your sins are, all of your sins are forgiven. All of them, yeah. All mm -hmm. of your sins are forgiven. Wow. 240. And why therefore do you not rather esteem yourselves happy? Yea, think verily that if any one among you suffer, he performs a great work. For the Lord giveth you life, and ye understand it not. For your offenses will oppress you, and if you had not suffered for his name's sake, you had now been dead unto the Lord. Yeah, so these, and this kind of lines up with what we were talking about, those individuals who deny him or have done some other uh, sin, it is this martyrdom that's actually going to purify them. And so that when they are born again and, you know, come back to the earth in, you know, new bodies or whatever, they'll be purified being they'll be purified beings, beings of light, ready to bring understanding and truth to the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. 241. Wherefore, I speak this unto you who deliberate whether you should confess or deny him. Confess that you have the Lord for your God, lest at any time denying him. Ye be delivered not unto bonds. Again, you know, he's, he's bringing this up a lot. Um, in the absence of it, you can't really see all of this going on. Makes me believe that it's coming one day. It's going to be part of the tribulation that, you know, that we have to suffer this. And you remember the, the book that we read called The Apocalypse of Elijah, where the Antichrist, that's one of the things he does is he targets the saints and tries to kill them all. Mm. That is the one thing that makes the rest of the world realize that, you know, that he is not the Christ, that he must be a bad dude, is when he starts actually trying to kill the father's seed. And that's kind of what wakes the world up. And they say, oh, wait a minute. How are you supposed to be our savior, but yet you killing people? Mm. That ain't the way our seed's supposed to work. And, you know, it's, it's at that point that they realize that they're following the wrong dude. Right. It so, also talks yeah. a lot about... Um, talks a lot about denying the father uh, in the book of visions as well so yeah. Hermes's book of visions mm -hmm. yeah okay. where the um, the church is uh, telling Hermes how not to deny the father so <clears throat> so it's going to be a big deal you know it, it ain't it ain't quite one yet it was back in you know in the Messiah's time about mm -hmm. 2,000 years ago they were killing people left and right yeah um you know, back in Martin Luther's time, anybody who was trying to, you know, translate the Bible or do anything about the Bible were getting killed left and right. But that really is not going on these days. Right. You know, but we do have it to come. Mm -hmm. 242. For all nations punish their servants which deny their masters. What think you that the Lord would do unto you? Who has the power of all things. So basically what it's going to do is remove some of that hands of protection. You know, if you deny him, you know, that's going to, he's going to cause some of that protection to leave off of you. To, mm -hmm. You know, you, you're not going to really be considered his people at that point once you have denied him.
Right. And you're going to find yourself on your own. Mm -hmm. Remove, therefore, out of your hearts these doubts, that ye may live forever unto God. No, I'm thinking no matter what, you know, no matter what comes your way, you're never going to deny the Father. You, and, you know, and remember who it is that does this. We, we, we talked about the white stones a while back and, you know, the white and round individuals mm -hmm. and how at any sign of adversity, um, they deny the Father. Remember, said that. Mm -hmm. So these are a lot of individuals that he's talking about because the white and round stones make up the majority of the Christian faith right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and so denying him um, is something that we really should be worried about because we're going to have a lot of opportunities to do so. Not all of them, like we said, not all of them are going to be deadly. So what do you do? What can I do? As a person, okay, as a person who is a quote-unquote denier, you know, when he comes down on me, I believe that I am this person um, that, you know, I'm scared, I'm doubtful, I'm going to deny the Father. So what do, do I do uh, now, That what can I be doing now to build my faith up, build, you know, build myself up that... I won't deny him. Come back and read this section again. Come back and read this section and, and read it over and over. Understanding, first of all, what happens to those that do deny him. You got to go back. Maybe you have to go back and look at that class again. It is those that actually deny him that will be slaughtered. That, that's going to be killed. You know, it ain't going to be the ones that stand up for him. It's going to be the ones that deny him. So you knowing that, you knowing that it. The bad stuff is going to happen to the ones that actually lose the faith in that moment. Mm -hmm. And so... I would say, uh, another thing I would say is that um, to start asking the Lord to help you build your faith, get your faith built up around Him, uh, become stronger in Him, constantly reading the Word and, and building your faith up, building your belief up, um, uh, and that will will help you to... Uh, assimilate to him and, and, and start building yourself up. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does, you know, but be careful what you pray for because, you know, if you pray for him to give you the strength not to deny his name, what is that going to look like? You're going to have the opportunity yeah. to, deny to deny his, his name. His and, name and, right. and so bad stuff is going to start happening to you as you start to build, build your faith right. up and make yourself stronger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that is an option. But one of the things is you don't want to deny him. You don't want yeah. it to even cross your mind that you will. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that if you're looking at somebody on television and you're going, I don't know if I would. You, you need to know. Mm -hmm. That will never be me. I will never deny him no matter mm -hmm. what. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No matter if it's, you know, for a sandwich or for a bullet mm -hmm. or whatever it is that's coming my way, you know, my answer is yes. What does it say up there? Uh, yes, I confess that I have the Lord as my God. Mm -hmm. You know, the Father is, that, that's who I listen to. 244. As for the twelfth mountain, which was white, there are such as have believed like sincere children, into whose thought there never came any malice nor have they ever known what sin was, but have always continued in their integrity. Sincere like children. Remember, that's what the Father said. We, we have to be like children when we approach the kingdom. We can't have any deceit in our heart or malice in our heart or, you know, or any, any transgressions or, or anything in our, in our heart. We basically have to have always continued in integrity. These make up those individuals on the twelfth mountain, on the white mountain. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, this kind of men shall without doubt inherit the kingdom of God, because they have never in anything defiled the commandments of God, but have continued with sincerity in the same condition all the days of their life. Okay, so now you have to start to compare. You can do another Bible study and compare those individuals from the seventh mountain to the individuals on the twelfth mountain, you know, and wonder, you know, how 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 are they different? Um, I bet they have more similarities than they have differences. Mm -hmm. Two forty six. Whosoever therefore said he shall continue as children without malice shall be more honorable than all those. 
of whom I have yet spoken. For all such children are honored by the Lord and esteemed the first of all. Now we have to, when we're reading the scripture, we always have to be very, very particular on the words that he uses because the Father makes sure that each word is absolutely true. And there's a lot being said right here. You know, in this verse right here, whosoever therefore shall continue as children without malice shall be more honorable than all those that we've spoken of so far. So far. Even the martyr? Even the martyr. Even, yeah, even, even, even the... The uh, bishops and the governors, even, you know, the mountains with all of the water and all of the green herbs and stuff. If we can just be like children with no malice in their heart, we'll be more honorable than any of those, according to what we read right here. And like I said, we have to take the word very literally. If it says it, it means it. What does malice mean? Some synonyms of malice is hatred, spite, malevolence, meanness, nastiness, cruelty, wickedness, or mischievousness. So basically trying to harm each other. It's, it's, it's all about uh, how we treat each other. So you're not having hatred toward each other or spite toward each other or malevolence towards each other. Meanness towards each other. Nastiness or cruelty towards each other. Is malice the same thing as guile? Uh, yeah, except guile you just think of it as coming out of your mouth. Okay. Whereas malice would be at coming out of your hands. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's still the same thing. It's still, you know, it's still coming from the same origin. Mm -hmm. yeah. 247. Happy therefore are ye who shall remove all malice from you and put on innocence, because you shall first see the Lord. All right. So you shall be the first ones to see the Lord. The ones who have no maliciousness in their hearts will be those that they will see. And, 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 you, but, and you know, one thing that's coming to my mind as far as why would maliciousness be so important or the lack thereof, you, you got to remember that it's all about how we treat each other, especially going forth into this tribulation. If, we, if we're going to be malicious towards each other, then we can we can definitely expect to be visited by these other women, these these other, you know, negative women. If we're going to be malicious, have malice in our heart. You know, that's stuff like hatred. That's stuff like, you know, envy. That's 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 a lot of bad stuff. And if we are actually doing this, taking taking action against one another, then we can expect stuff like uh, uh, irascibility or hatred or uh, foolishness to come and make themselves a part of our lives, too. Mm -hmm. Well, this is um Malice and deception and meanness and all those those synonyms uh, is just opposite of everything that the Messiah talked about, opposite mm -hmm. of everything that he preached, because he preached loving others before yourself and, you know, helping others out and things, things like that. So we definitely can't can't go into the tribulation, you know, thinking that, you know, I'm just I just have to take care of my own self. It's all. It's going to be all about helping each other out. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you can't do so if you have malice. If you're a malicious person, you know, that's going to prevent you from helping anybody except those that are helping you. Right. 248. And after he had thus ended his explanation of all the mountains, I said unto him, Sir, show me now also what concerned the stones that were brought out of the plain and put into the tower in the room of those that were rejected. So now he's about to start talking about the stones where we're with number 12 we conclude the mountains. Alright so well, let's go ahead and end it there with the mountains and then next class we'll pick up with the stones then. Alright so we'll go ahead and end it there. If you got something out of it go ahead and click the like button or leave us a comment especially if you have any questions or anything. We're not experts on this guys. We're, we're basically students like you are. We're just doing our Bible study online for everybody to see. So add, add your uh, contributions if you would that can actually help us out. Mm -hmm. yep. Alright Shalom. Shalom.